Thank you so much, uh, Donald. And listen, it's fantastic to see you all here uh, at the college and fantastic speeches uh, and uh, really it was I think, a wonderful evening. I'm not going to keep it for very long. I'll tell you first just a little bit, yeah, about um, who I am. I'm a, I'm a consultant in the matter and I spend a lot of my time taking care of people with lung disease, but I also cover the emergency department. So I see people coming in every day and I saw them today, people coming in with the conditions, I suppose, that afflict the human. And uh, there are many things that I see. I see people with lifestyle conditions. I see people with cancer, with heart disease, with strokes, and these people coming in every day. But the one thing, I suppose, that often strikes me most, really, that you don't hear said, is, is frailty. The frailty is a, is a human condition. And frailty can mean many, many different things. You can be frail when you're young, you can be frail when you're old. But one of the things that that does is it leaves people less resilient. And resilience is a thing that Eamon talked about. And I think is really important that as a medical profession, we start to think a little bit more about resilience. Resilience is also about how you can handle a disease when it hits you, no matter what age you are. And Ronan spoke so well about that. The resilience to take a diagnosis and then deal with it. And so many of us are getting older, we're living longer, we've heard that, but we're getting to older age less resilient than we need to be. And so because of that, one of my passions is to see, as a doctor, how can I pass on the messages that medical science has brought to us to date that will impact upon people so that you will get older, more resilient, less frail, more able to enjoy life as we get older. And because of some of those thoughts, I suppose, you think, well, wouldn't it be great? Scientists are always looking for a drug that might be able to give us that, a drug that could prevent disease and a drug that could treat disease when it came along. But in fact, there's something right underneath our noses that you've heard about tonight very, very clearly, and particularly from Eamon's call to action, that in fact exercise, and we've called this new um, uh, uh, policy document that we've come out, we've called it, called that we've got a new wonder drug. And we call it a wonder drug because people are always looking for that, the magic bullet, but you know what? Exercise and physical activity is a wonder drug. It can prevent disease. So in the first instance, being more physically active prevents disease. It reduces your chance of heart disease by 30%. It reduces your chance of diabetes by 30%. It reduces your chances of dementia that Ronan talked about by 30%. There aren't any drugs that we have that can do that for you. The other thing it does is when you get a disease, how you deal with that disease is impacted upon how you use physical activity. So that if you do have dementia, physical activity, being more active, exercising, can reduce the impact of that disease and delay its progression. Same for diabetes, same for hypertension. You can your doctor tells you you have hypertension, but guess what? Being more physically active will reduce your systolic blood pressure by anywhere from 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury, which might be need a difference between going on an extra drug and so on. And similar for cholesterol, There's so many things, even cancer. I think people who exercise have better outcomes from the cancers they get. Exercise actually prevents or reduces your likelihood of breast and colon cancer by 30%, believe it or not, or even more than that in some studies. So it's a remarkable thing that being more physically active can have those sorts of impacts. And so it turns out that because of that, um, the president, uh, Professor Frank Murray, got a group of people together and said, would you not move forward an advocacy group on this whole area? We've done it in alcohol, and it's been very successful in that area. We've now done it with the obesity. How about with physical activity? Can we move this area forward? As physicians, we're not vest we've no vested interest, but we have experience, because we see what's going on in the emergency rooms, we see what's happening to people, and we share people's illness in their lives and so on. So you pull together myself and, and my co-chair, uh, Peter Wright, who's up, uh, a public health doctor up in Donegal, and we took uh, the colleges of, uh, of psychiatry, uh, of pediatrics, general practitioners, obstetricians. Uh, we took some f uh, f physiotherapists. We took a lot of people together into a room, medicine for the elderly. And so we put them all into a room and we start working on this policy document. And today we announced it. And we're very proud of that because it's all of the evidence that's out there at the moment that supports the idea that being more physically active can make a difference to people's lives. And we've chosen three targets that we have uh, for this. And we call it the three Ps. And the first of those Ps is our own profession. So we're going to look at how we train doctors in Ireland, and we're going to look at the curriculum, and we're going to make sure that it in every single college that we're working with, that it includes some training, like Eamon said, in the whole area of physical activity, what it can do, how you engage with patients on it, and how you can help people to bring it into their lives. So we're going after our own profession, we're, we're surveying the profession, and we're going to make changes there. 
The second P that we're going after is policymakers. And we were delighted today to have the minister, uh, uh, Minister Corcoran Kennedy, who turned up, and she was fantastic, really supportive, spoke off the record very positively about what we're doing as well. But we're going after policymakers. They're the ones who can really make the change. And things are happening, I and mean, they really are. But we need to be able to go in there as independent people, as physicians, and say, look, here's the data for you. This is how much it's cost in the country right now with the lifestyles that we're going down and way we're living. If we change our way, we're going to save a lot of money. We're going to save a lot in chronic ill health in years to come. And then the third P, the third group, are you, the population at large, and a message. What's the message? And the message, I think, couldn't really say it better than, than the way Eamon said it today. The impact of physical activity, you don't have to be an Olympic athlete, but you can learn a lot from an Olympic athlete. And that the way that you approach it, that you do have to have a routine, you do have to think about putting physical activity into your life. Your age makes no difference whatsoever, and you've heard that very clearly from, from, from Eamon. In fact, the older you are, the more, li more likely you're going to get some benefit from it and reduce your chances of falls, reduce your chance of frailty. So all age groups, getting involved. I think the other thing that Eamon said is really important, we really strongly believe in, is the need for a buddy, someone to do it with you. Get involved in your local GAA club, for example. They're now having healthy clubs initiatives, which I think is really fantastic. So what we say, really, the minimum really we think you should do is 30 minutes of a moderate activity every day. Go for a good steady walk for 30 minutes. If you like watching the news at 9 o'clock, go out for 30 minutes beforehand, put on a hat and coat and walk, do a nice vigorous walk, tell your friends you're doing it, challenge them to come along with you. So we have a number of initiatives that we have within this advocacy document. And today's the day that we launched it. It's only day one of a long plan ahead to start pushing those three Ps. So you'll hear about us again. And I'm delighted that you were here for the day that we uh, launched uh, the proposal. And uh, I know after hearing our wonderful speakers tonight that you'll be strongly supporting the uh, initiative as we move forward. So thank you very much.